Okay, once again, we are placing a call to Jamie Boyum. He is over at Caddo Lake. Now, we've been covering this um, overflowing of the river of the lakes, and it's kind of reaching, or it's due to reach its crest today. Jamie, I believe, is in uh, Caddo Lake, and I believe that he's going to give us a whole lot more information than I can from the newsroom. Jamie, it looks very green behind you, but is there some standing water underneath all that just yet? Oh, yeah, it's very green out here. There's no doubt. Uh, it's also very wet. As you see, here is a road right behind me that if you wanted to drive on it, which maybe isn't the best idea in the world, uh, you just stay between the stakes. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, because, I mean, there are people, obviously, that live out here, and they have to get in and out. Uh, a lot of these people have boats, so they can get in and out. But, uh, you know, they know the roads. Uh, this is not rushing water, so a lot of people just kind of drive through uh, and to, to get out and back in and go about their business. And as you can hear behind me, there's a chainsaw way out here in the distance. But I don't think I'll be waiting out there to see exactly what they're doing. Uh, no, that's not going to be happening. Um, here, uh, you know, there are some, there's a home back here that looks like it's flooded, but really it's up on stilts. Um, so... You know, they're ready for that. They know that this water is going to come up. In fact, there's a guy I stand right here next to me that knows all about this because he's uh, had a house out here at Caddo for six months now. <laughs> no, let's try it. A lot of years. Come on over here, Rick. A hundred years. <laughs> uh, yes, he says a hundred years he's been out here. So there you go. This is, uh, this is Rick Michaels, the youngest 200 year old man you've ever seen <laughs> and uh i guess this uh this just happened you just gotta deal with it. it's a seasonal thing it, uh, it happens a lot but you know we're all used to it uh luckily the water's not up any higher than it is now it's been a lot higher than this before yeah but uh we're sitting at a it's still an inconvenience for everyone that lives here oh sure yeah i mean everybody's got a because a lot of people they, their houses are on stilts right. but they store stuff under there right and then what happens well they have to move it out move somewhere else or whatever and then you have run into the problem too of the when you drive up and down the roads your car throws away just like the boats throw away and it does damage some things that just aren't quite flood, flooded yet uh it's um, one of those things you have to be careful and mindful of that all the time because you can actually cause damage to someone who doesn't currently have damage by a four inch wake yeah yeah because there way. aren't the, the tide does not come in at Caddo. right there aren't waves i don't here. think yeah, yeah. <laughs> well you never know but um so, uh, so i guess that's one of the big problems why and, and one of the big issues where they're asking people not to put their boats on those right exact same thing mm -hmm. exact same thing it's a uh, everybody builds their houses and the roads were built to a certain level of the lake and when the lake gets into a flood like it is right now uh, everything's out of culture so you just have to be careful and mindful and thoughtful and just do the right thing yeah because uh, people whose homes are sitting right on the water that wake's going it could it, it literally could be the difference in them having no damage and having tens of thousands of dollars in damage just from a little four inch wake you don't think about it much until you're there watching it and then you can go oh i understand now how that could be a problem and you know four inch wake in very big but like i say it's four inches more water than, than you had before yeah right, right right and you you live uh up up, up the bank a little way right I, where i live is a We've never had water in our house since it's, it's been there since 1919. And we've never had water in the house. We've had water within like just a few inches in one house that didn't go in. But uh, um, but you got your uh, you got your pier out there, your dock. My dock's about three, about three feet of water on top of the dock right now. And uh, uh, we, we hope that most people will not drive up and down in front of my dock or all the other docks that are around me just because it creates a huge issue as far as the pressure that the water, you know, poses to the pier. Yeah, I guess that could potentially tear it up, tear things up. And Absolutely. Then that's going to flow down. Exactly, and that could cause a hazard for somebody out there at some point in time in the future. Mm -hmm. Because you could tell earlier, there's not a whole lot of people running around on the lake out there right now. Most of the folks that are out there are out there for a reason. Like there's a tree down and like the canal behind us, there's a boat back there right now, people cutting trees from the boat. Yeah, yeah, in that heavy current. So yeah, right. We're doing that right. for a reason, right? Uh, yeah, the, the the few boats I've seen were 
going at the correct speed. Because you were telling me uh, uh, going slow can be worse than going fast. When you have your boat, your boat has a tendency as the more power you give it, the more it gets up on a plane. So when you're like um, not at an idle speed, but you get a little more than that, the back of your boat goes into the water because that's what the torque of the engine does, and it makes your wake a lot larger. I mean, you can literally be going two miles an hour and throwing a 12-inch wake and you know you can be going 65 miles an hour and throwing a three inch wake yeah it's just it's you know it's physics it's physics exactly it's water, mathematics water right. physics exactly. there you go so um uh I, so at this point i guess uh, many of the boat ramps are probably all of them are closed yes right? they are mm -hmm. they're all closed i think they're closed from the 43 bridge all the way into louisiana see some of the water right now in louisiana is a little higher than it is here because it's already flowed past us there's a um there's a thing in Louisiana called a weir. It's like a lot of people call it the dam. It's really not a dam. It's actually a place that water flows over pretty much all the time. It was built in the uh, night, about, I think, 1910 by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers so they could drill oil wells in the lake and have a constant water level so they could get the rigs and equipment back and forth from the land to the lakes. In fact, the very first offshore oil well ever drilled in the world was drilled here at Cata. Oh, wow. The Hughes family, Howard Hughes's father drilled it. Wow, that's I crazy. Think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something it, like that. It's a he doesn't he doesn't have much information to impart. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, I guess at this point, uh, the, the main thing is stay out of the water. Yes. And when you are, just be mindful. When yeah. you're out there on the, just remember there's somebody that's going to be receiving your footprint, which is your wake. Yeah. And then uh, and and Cato, uh rises, I guess, because uh, Lake Pines gets full. They release the water, uh, comes downstream, but then also you were telling me about the Red River. It flows into the Red River, and if that's high, it kind of stops everything. Caddo is a flowing, it's a it's a lake, but it's literally like just a big wide river, and uh, it has to drain. So if you're, if Caddo is flowing into a flooded Red River, it cannot drain, so it backs up. You know, in the, in the past, a lot of the most serious floods that have happened here have happened because of the fact that the red was also in a very serious flood and there was no place for the water to actually go. It just stops and goes out. Yes. That's all it can do. Yeah, it goes this way. Yeah, 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 yeah. and this way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And uh, this makes it wider. Uh, and then uh, the the level you were looking at that this morning, it's uh, 173 and a half feet, something like that. Yeah. We were looking at that. Uh, uh, I think I mentioned to you the fact that those all of those levels are taken by hand, which I mean they have like a little gauge out there, and somebody actually walks out and goes, "Oh, look, it's 173.5." It's no, there's not anything sophisticated that I'm aware of. In fact, it even tells you on the website when you look at it that the gauge are manually read hmm. okay and uh, of course that is uh sea level yes 174 feet above yes sea level. yeah right and uh and the normal is 168 nine. something like that in in that area mm -hmm. yeah so the lake's up uh, you have four or five feet yes yeah okay and uh but there's a little bit of good news because you put a stake in the ground right there on your shoreline Probably sophisticated man yeah, no it yes. is so smart dude and so uh hey, what's that telling you at this point the lake's going down okay gone down several inches since this morning so just this morning it yes starts going down. yes well that's good news for well, where i am yeah like i say you know in different areas of the lake it's going to be different times going down the farther you are up river the more it's gone down the farther you are down river toward red the more that it's going to be up until it drains out yeah that makes that totally makes sense right. and uh, uh and then you also said that lake of the pines they don't have the dam full open right but from what i understand lake of the pines either close their gates or shut them back quite a bit just to keep this from getting any more flooded than it already is which is a very you know very nice gesture for them to make uh, or just you know luck the draw from the two okay all right so uh you have any questions Devin? if we can hear you no. i don't know if we can hear you very very well no questions i think you covered it jamie i was just uh, really intrigued on hearing the history of it all well uh all right okay good deal and uh you know we we ate up some of your day so there you go I love it. That's what that's what I'm here for. <laughs> Jamie, we will hear from you again in your story later on in uh, the newscast. Get back safe.
and a little dry, hopefully. Oh, we'll do. Yeah, we're not to. We're not doing any waiting or there swimming or driving through it or <laughs> you know. We're 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 good. Rick's got a boat, but okay. we elected not to do that because you know it makes a wait. So there you go. Sounds good. Once again, Jamie Boyum out there at Cattle Lake talking all things flooding uh, there with what seems like an expert, right? Man, he was full of knowledge. All right, from there we're gonna go ahead.